Okay, so now we are going to make a Lego piece um, to exact factory standards, as if you invented the Lego piece yourself and are now a multi-trillionaire. Um, so what we're going to do first is, as always, I think it's best to save your file um, to start with. So click save and call it whatever your last name is, um, Lego, unless you are one of the Saeeds, in which case, please use your first initial because you both have the same last name. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the um, base of the Lego piece. So we're going to create a sketch and um, the Lego piece, they sit flat. So I think it's best to draw those flat. You could start it from a sketch on the side and extrude it sideways if you wanted to, but that doesn't seem logical to me. So I am going to um, draw it on that bottom work plane. And then we're going to go ahead and create a rectangle. So again, click at the center and um, click at the center and drag. And um, just sort of drag. Mine's like 20 by 50-ish right now. Just sort of drag somewhere in that, in that area. And then what you are going to do is make it 15.8 um, high by 31.8 wide. And now you'll notice that it's um, it's turned black and it has these little symbols. These little symbols are, are letting you know, um, these are constraints. So you can't, if you draw something perfectly rectangular, um, Fusion will assume you know what you're doing and will assume you wanna keep it that way and you don't wanna accidentally knock it out of kilter. So these are automatically constrained to being equal sides and parallel sides and even perpendiculars, although it doesn't need to create the perpendiculars when it already knows they're equal and parallel because it couldn't possibly be anything else. And we'll deal with constraints quite a bit later. I just thought you might wonder what those little symbols mean. Um, we'll actually use those at some point. Okay, I just need my specs because... So this is, like I said, exactly to standard. So now we're going to turn the um, the Lego sketch. We're going to go ahead and finish that. And we are going to, I'm just going to click home because mine didn't rotate around. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, if yours rotated around, great. Again, it's just unpredictable when it does that or not. So now we want to push pull. We want to extrude this um, to make it a block. So we're going to choose press pull or just click Q. I, I'm not using keyboard commands because you can't see me use my keyboard. Um, and then it wants you to select. So we're going to select. There's only one thing to select. And then you can either type in 9.6 here or 9.6 there. Wherever you want to uh, type that in, go ahead and type in 9.6. It is a 9.6 millimeter block. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the, make the little pegs on top of the block. So as always to do that, we're going to draw on the top of the block. And if you don't draw on the top of the block, yours won't work properly later. So just know you're going to have to come back here and fix it if you don't draw on top of the block because it won't work later. Um, if the sketch isn't part of the block, then when I you try to use the sketch, to manipulate the block, it won't change the block. Um, it will just be this weird sketch floating in space that has no relationship to the block. It's just like an entirely different entity. So um, I'm going to create sketch, and you've got to choose the top. Don't accidentally come over here. Try to avoid these work planes when you're not using them. Like Stay as far away from them as you possibly can when you're not using them. Okay, And then I'm just going to click on that and now it knows I want to draw there and then I'm going to click on the circle which you could just type in C and I want this circle to be kind of up around roughly where um, one of the pegs would be um, so I'm just going to start drawing it there doesn't have to be perfect you'll see we're going to use um, dimensioning that's one of the big things you're going to learn in this um, that we haven't done before so this circle is 4.8 Okay. Now notice it's blue right now. That's because the circle is kind of floating on top of a block. Um, Fusion always wants you to lock everything down. Again, so you can't move things by mistake is really what it's about. And it's just how engineers work. They want things fully constrained. 
And when things aren't fully constrained, they're blue to let you know it's not fully constrained. So your boss might be mad at you. And over time, you'll you'll more fully understand this. But that's what we're going to do right now. We are going to fully constrain this with the sketch dimension tool, which is an incredibly important tool that's also a little hard to get the hang of in a situation like this. So what we want to do is we want to set the dimension. Um, the Lego manufacturer has told us that this center of this circle is 3.9 millimeters from the top edge here, from that top horizontal edge. So the sketch dimension tool is how we're going to set that. And that is either here or it's under the create menu at the bottom when you're in sketching like we are right now. So don't finish your sketch by mistake or uh, you won't be able to do this. Um, and it's also D because you use it a lot, D for dimension. So I'm going to click on that one. All right. So the way this works isn't intuitive to people. Again, I want to set the dimension between here and here, which is going to go out here. So I'm going to click on here. I'll zoom way in. I'm going to click on this center point to let it know that's one of my points. And I'm going to click on the top edge to know that's my other point that I'm setting the dimension. And then I'm going to drag outward without my mouse button held down. So um, no, don't leave your mouse button hold down and drag outward, and that will give you the dimension to set, okay? Then click to, to let it know that you're just telling it where you wanna put it, and I don't really care where you put it as long as it's outside of the Lego piece, and then you're gonna type in 3.0, okay? And I'm just gonna undo that and do it again, because this is so hard for people to get the first time. So again, D, I'm setting the dimension between the this point and this edge. So I need to tell it that this point and then never holding your mouse button down throughout any of the sketch dimensioning process, I believe. Um, so click on the point, let go of the mouse button, click on the upper edge, let go of the mouse button, and then don't drag upwards. That's not going to make sense to it. Drag outwards because that's where you're set putting your dimension, just like you were drawing an architectural drawing. Okay. And if you have trouble with this, just grab me and I'll do it with you um, because it is really hard for people the first time. Okay. And then click to let it know that that's where you want to place it. Okay. And then type in 3.9. So you got to click on the first reference point, the second reference, which is an edge, and then drag it out again without your mouse button held down. And then just tell it where you want to place it by clicking. So you're clicking three times point, edge, and then somewhere where you want to place it and then type in your dimension and you're good to go. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Um, uh, Legos, these, this happens to be equidistant from the top and the side. So again, here we're going to, the reference points are this point and this edge, and we're going to go up here and place it up here. So point, and it stays in sketch dimensioning. I'm assuming you're going to do a lot of it because you often do a bunch of these at once. So you don't have to keep choosing sketch dimension, point, edge, and then drag upwards and click to place it more or less where I place mine, type in 3.9. And now your circle is exactly where it's supposed to be. And um, you've got it locked in place with two dimensions and with an exact uh, parameter for diameter. So notice it is now black to let you know it's locked in place. So I wanted to show you one thing. If by mistake you click finish sketch before you finish the sketch, um, remember you can always go back here and you can always um, keep editing your sketch. So I just did that by mistake just to remind you that I can come back here. This is the sketch I was working on. This is the first sketch of the bottom of it, which I don't want to work on. This is the extrusion uh, that made the block. And then this is the sketch I was just working on. Okay. So now what we want to do is we're going to use this really handy dandy. We want eight pegs, right? It's an eight peg um, block. So we're going to use this really handy dandy um, tool called the rectangular pattern tool. So you don't have to copy and paste this or draw eight circles. Really handy dandy tool called the rectangular pattern tool. Okay, I'm going to click on rectangular pattern under the create menu because I'm creating a new sketch entity. 
Okay, so then the way this works is the first thing is always look at your dialog box. And by the way, if they're, uh, you know, pull them out if they're not floating there. So the first thing it wants you to do is select. Now it's still waiting for you to select because you might select more than one thing, but you can continue to work. We want to go, um, first we're gonna make the four across and then we're gonna make the two down. And you'll see what I mean. And you might just need to watch this twice on the video. Sketch and mention I did twice because it's just so crazy the first time you do it, but this is pretty intuitive, I think. Um, so we wanna make four across. Okay, then there are two choices here. Yours probably is set at extent right now because that's the way it is out of the box. Um, extent means you tell it you want it, you want it to make four of them, and you want the extent of those four to be a certain dimension. So you want the first one to be a certain dimension from the last one. Spacing says you want each one to be this many millimeters apart. Okay. So right now, mine set at, at zero. Yours might have a number already set into it, which is making it freak out and draw circles the wrong direction. Um, so what we want to do here is we've been told that these are eight millimeters apart. But for some reason, and it kind of, I think it depends how, which direction you draw when you drag. Um, the thing to know with fusion with these kind of things is sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive. And you just have to get used to that. Um, right now, the blue arrow is pointing the wrong way. So that's a key to me that if I type an eight, it's going to go the wrong way, right? So if it's pointing the wrong way, um, you probably want to type in a negative number first. And that gives you your four circles. Now, don't click OK yet because we want to make eight circles. So now what we want to do is we want to tell it we want two. And since we used spacing, it's going to continue with spacing. Because we, um, because the arrow is pointing down and that's the way we want to go, this time that will work. So type in eight for your, because that's the spacing between those two. And that will now create your eight circles. Okay. So again, just look in your dialog box. You've got the circle selected. You've got four, you've got the distance type as spacing, not extent, but spacing because that is um, what we, we've been told. That's how we've been told how to build this is by making them eight, make each circle eight, center, eight millimeters apart. And then you want um, the quantity four spacing minus eight because the arrow was probably going the wrong way unless it's just random and yours went the right way. I think it's always the wrong way in this one. Um, and then two, um, it's the right way, wanting to point down almost always. Um, and eight spacing there too. And now you've got eight um, circles, okay? So now you are, you're done with your sketch. We're gonna turn those into pegs. So just go ahead and click finish sketch. And again, you're probably gonna need to hit home to get this thing to um, go around the way you So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn each of these into a peg. And we've been told that the pegs are 1.8 millimeters. So we are going to, once again, Q will get you there, but I'm going to use the menu, modify, push, pull. And then uh, it's waiting for us to select. So again, the beauty in um, Fusion, one of the things that makes it super powerful is you can select multiple entities and do them all at once instead of doing things one at a time or copying and pasting. So I'm going to select this. It's still waiting. I could still continue to select, 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 select all eight of these. And then notice if I select something by mistake, if I click on it again, it unselects. If I select, if I just make a total mess of things, I can X out my selections like that, right? So you can unselect, reselect, X out selections. It's really well designed um, for this process because you're going to do it a lot. So they gave me, they put a lot of thought into this. Okay, we just want it going in one direction. We want it to go a distance. You'll see different things. Um, and then we want it to be 1.8. Yours is probably saying new uh, join right now. And that's what you want. You want it to join. New body means it would make the eight pegs um, an entirely different part so that if you wanted to make them a different color or a different material, you could. But we want this to all be one unit. 
And again, we'll do things where you do want things to be separate bodies. I just have not gotten there yet with you. So now you've got all eight of them. They're going up 1.8. Click OK. Oh, you know what? I still had my visual display um, as uh, shaded. Make sure you've got the visible edges. That's probably why you might have noticed mine didn't have the lines on it. I'm certainly not going to re-record all of this because of that. Um, so just remember, if you don't see those, it just makes it a little, I noticed then it was a little hard to see. When it was a block, it was okay. But when it was pegs, it's just started to be hard to see. So make sure you've got your visual edges shaded with visible edges. If you happen to turn that off when I asked you to later and forgot to turn it back on like I did. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to make the bottom of this hollow with the little tubey things that click into the little pegs. So we need to get to the bottom of this, literally. So I'm going to use, you could use your right mouse button to orbit, or you could use the view cube, just kind of orbit so you can, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And again, remember, it's, you kind of have to get used to the fact that it zooms to where your arrow is. So make sure your arrow is where you want it to be zooming. So now I'm looking at the bottom of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is the wall of the Lego <clears throat> is 1.2 millimeters. So instead of having to draw a new figure out how big a rectangle you need to make so that it's 1.6 millimeters, uh, 1.2 millimeters on each side less than your original rectangle, we've got another really nifty tool called the offset tool for when you want to make a, rect uh, a shape within another shape that's parallel to it. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so we're going to create a sketch. And once again, try to stay away from these for now because we are going to sketch on here. And again, if you don't sketch on the bottom, when you try to extrude and do those things, it won't be part of the block. It's the most common mistake people make. So, um, so always make sure if you're going to sketch on something, sketch on it. Don't just sketch in space because then it's just in space. It's not really part of it. It's how fusion works, and you just got to get used to that workflow. Okay, so create sketch, click on the bottom, and it'll just flip you around to be looking at the bottom. And then under modify, should I think this should be under create because I'm creating a new rectangle, but it's under modify. Um, o is for offset if you want to use the O. Um, modify offset. It's also this button here, a very common tool. Okay. So click offset, it's waiting for you. It calls it sketch curves because you can offset curves, but these are um, sketch corners, don't worry about it. I don't know why it calls it sketch curves instead of sketch edges is what I would call it. Um, so it needs you to tell it what you want to offset, which is the outside edge. Doesn't matter which you choose, it knows that this is a shape. So you just need to choose some edge of this shape and it will create a little slider. So as always, um, you could offset out and make like a little flange. We want to offset in and make a rectangle within the rectangle. So in this case, you want it, offset out would be your positive. Off, you could drag the slider, but um, we're not going to drag the slider. I'll show you how the slider works, just so you know. We could drag the slider and try to get it to be exactly minus 1.2, but it's probably not going to work. So type in minus 1.2 in here or in here. Don't care about which way. Don't worry about chain selection and flip. Someday I'll explain those to you when you need them. OK, click OK. And now you have your offset edge. Don't click Finish Sketch. We've got quite a bit of sketching to do. So now we are going to make the circles for the little tubes. And we need two concentric circles to do that. So we are going to, uh, you don't need to tell it to create a new sketch. We're still in that old sketch and we want to stay in that old sketch. If you got out of it, right click and edit it because you want all of this to be part of the same sketch because they're all going to work together in a few minutes. And if you have trouble with this, just, you know, I can help you and backtrack you um, and help you in class. So we're going to create a circle. This is more or less in the middle, a third of the way out. If you don't make these close to where they go, when you constrain them with the dimensions, sometimes it gets confused. So try to make them close to where they're going to go. And then the outside, I'm going to make the outside circle first, which is a really random size of 6.514. 
but this is really what Legos are, 6.514, and click OK. And then we're going to make another circle. It doesn't just keep making circles. You have to keep tell it to make a new circle. And then again, make sure you've got that center point. Don't be off at all. Make sure that center point's got the, you know, if you need to zoom in, zoom in. Make sure the center point's got these blue circle around it and click and drag out again. And then this one is 4.8. Is that starting to look like one of those little bottom two Bs? It is, isn't it? So exciting. So guess what's next? I'll bet some of you can guess what's next. Next, we're going to create the rectangular. So this isn't a circular pattern, even though we're patterning circles. Circular patterns when you want to make things around in a circle, which we'll do on another on our next project, actually. Rectangular pattern. OK, so this time we want to pattern both. Oh, actually, nope. sorry, cancel. We need to dimension this first. So um, so this time this side is 7.95 from the center of the of the circles and it'll do both. Um, one thing. Oh, yeah, I meant to mention this. One thing is when I made the second cent circle um off the point center point of the first circle again um it assumes i knew what i was doing and it automatically applied a constraint that made those two locked as concentric so see that little symbol there and again we'll work with constraints more but um if you uh dimension one of these it, they're locked together and it will dimension them both at once so sketch dimension is d or this little symbol here or create sketch dimension and again, um, this side is 7.95 from this center point. So I'm going to click on the center point. I'm going to click on this side. You got to make sure it's blue lit up. And then you're going to drag up, even though it goes against what seems like common sense. But it's not how working drawings work. This is how working drawings work, right? 7.95. And then I want to tell it how far it stays in sketch dimensioning. I want to tell it how far the center is from the top and drag outward to place that dimension. And it's slightly different, oddly enough. Don't ask me why, but Legos are slightly different in their dimensions here. And it's 7.9. So now it's black. It's all, what reminded me was it was blue. And I was like, why is it blue? Oh yeah, because I haven't dimensioned them yet. Now we're ready to do the rectangular pattern. So create rectangular pattern. So now it is waiting for me. I can select both and do them both at once because they're going to be dope both at once. So I'm going to select this. It's still waiting for me to select. So I'm going to select this. And I get to pattern both circles at the same time. Now this time, because I went right last time, it thinks I want to go right. And because, although oddly enough, it thinks I want to go up, even though I went down last time. So I don't know. This stuff is just, it's just random. Um, it's um, artificial intelligence on this. I'm just not really quite sure what the artificial intelligence is here. But in any case, um, we don't want to go up this time. We just want to go to the right. It's probably still on spacing, which we want. These are also going to be eight apart. You want three, which it might be on. It might be a different number. Um, double check the number is three. And then mine is still always sticking with zero. I want eight. Um, don't bother with the uh, the spacing on the vertical axis because we don't want that. We just want three across. We don't want anything down, right? So you should have spacing three quantity eight in this box or this box or minus eight if your arrow happened to be going the other way. And now we've got our circles, okay? So now the final step is to um, extrude up to make the hollow space. So finish sketch. Um, and then you're going to need to rotate. You still need to see the bottom. So the home button is not going to help. You still need to see the bottom. And what we want to do is we want this perimeter here, this wall, to be solid. And we want this wall to be solid. And we want this wall to be solid. We want everything else to be hollow. So watch and be amazed. I'm going to modify, press, pull. And I don't want to push pull the rings. I want to push pull the center. 
the center and the center. And again, if it's not letting you do this, you didn't put your sketch on that face and you got to go back and fix it. Um, sorry. Undo, 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 undo. In this case, I don't think you can just go back and edit the sketch because it's once you've placed it, that's the one thing you can't fix. So I also want to hollow out the rectangular part. So click on that. Notice it's letting me select four things. So I'm going to also hollow that out. And I want to cut. So I'm going to type in minus 8.4, and it's going to turn red and cut, and click OK, and you should see a beautiful Lego piece. I'll go ahead and click Home. So you're looking at it as a Lego piece. And now I wanted to just show you how, <clears throat> how to change the appearance of things. So we want to make this look like a, a Lego piece. Let's say we want to make it look plastic and a little bit out of a translucent, slightly translucent material. All right. So um, I'll show you how appearances work. So under modify, yeah, under modify is the appearance. So um, Fusion has built in all these different materials you can turn things into instead of just the generic gray box that you're looking at now. So uh, it's A because you do this a lot, but under create, modify, choose appearance, and we're going to modify the appearance. And it brings up this dialog box. So mine is still um, open from when I was playing around earlier. I'm trying to remind myself what to do. So look at all these amazing materials you can make your thing into. Um, so you don't have to make, I'm gonna make mine. You can make yours out of plastic. The one thing I noticed, and I swear it hasn't been like this before, is now the solid plastics don't come in a lot of colors, but the translucent do. So you gotta do translucent if you want colored plastic, but I'm gonna make mine out of, well, yeah, I'll make mine out of that just to be normal first. So what you wanna do with this is just, Click and hold your mouse button down this time and just drag your appearance um, material onto your little block and it'll change into that little um, color, okay? And then, then now to see it in its full glory, you might wanna get rid of the um, visible edges, okay? And you'll notice it's still not really beautiful. That's because we um, simplified the graphics for your graphics card. So. I wouldn't do this if you were you, if I was you on a student laptop, but um, just to show you what it looks like with the full um, graphics, I'm gonna change graphics diagnostic and I'm gonna uncheck the limit effects. And you can see it's just a nicer, more shaded, prettier look to it. Um, and I'm even gonna go back just so we're the same. And you can try it, just don't try it in class. <laughs> try it at home. <laughs> when if you crash your computer, it's not that big a deal. Okay, and then undo, really go back and fix this so that you're working at the, you know, you're, you're using the least possible processor power, except for situations like this when you really wanna see it in all its beauty. Um, so I'm gonna try a different one. Like I was going to do, I'm going to make a solid gold Lego, okay? And then I'll change my graphics back to um, uh, the, uh, to the full-on so you can see what it looks like in full-on beauty, okay? There is another thing you can do which will really render it in really full-on beauty, but this takes massive processor power. It, it, it freezes up my computer often. But if you've got a powerful computer and you want to try this, I'll do it in, I'll do a video where I do this in front of you. And I'll just make, I've got a lot of stuff running right now, so I'm not going to do it. But you can try it if you have a powerful computer. Um, click render. And there's all kinds of fun tools you can do to render it so that you could um, put it on a, on a kickstart website or something like that, right? Where you want to sell your product. Okay, the last thing I want us to do is um, do the same process to go back to our key, just partly to do it again and partly just to remind you how to get to files that you want to get back to when you aren't using them. So um, the waffle will take you back to, or ice cube tray or whatever you want to call it, will take you, open up your data panels, what this is called, dashboard, whatever you want to call it. And um, go ahead and open up your key. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to X out the data panel to give me more 
screen real estate. I'm going to type in A, or you could go under modify and choose appearance. Either way. And then um, this one, I'm going to make it a polished bronze key. Okay.